so back out on the course of Carden Park and I'm on the Nicholas course uh, this week and I'm about to test out the uh, tailor-made high toe wedge real interesting one for me when this came through from tailor-made 64 degree wedge a wedge aloft that I have never ever played before and I must admit on first glance I just thought it was too lofted how am I going to manage with this I couldn't really see how it would be a club that you consider gaming simply because it seemed like a luxury obviously for flop shots perfect but then you have to drop a club out of the bag just to get this sort of um, almost specialist club into the bag and I, that was my consideration having played with it for a couple of rounds my mind has changed I'm going to show you why in this video but first of all I'm going to throw in what is a full shot at least according to dry ball data over at four golf because I've got some of that that I'll throw up later um, so 64 degree loft was suggesting maximum was in and around the sort of 80 yard as a full shot lovely little uh, shot here and water down the right let's see if we can get a couple on the green The interesting thing, I mean, it's the, the wind is into us and it's not the kind of shot you choose to play, quite honestly, with, a, with a, a wedge into wind. And you can see the hang time, it comes down very, very soft and lands soft as well. Not exactly spinning as such, but landing very soft. There's a s severe uh, descent angle, as you can see from the dry ball data later. Um, that's a full shot, but what I'm more interested in, in what the versatility of this club and what it can do in and around the greens. Right, so we're going to start off. What I want to do in this video, I want to try and show you the versatility of this wedge. The versatility of this wedge in the hands of an average golfer. Because I am not a great wedge player. It's not a strong point of my game. It's something that, like I said, is I would highlight as a weakness. But what I found with this, this high toe wedge is the versatility. I've been in a number of situations over the last couple of rounds, in and around the green, whether it be from the rough, from tight lies, whether I want a flop shot, chip and run. And I've been able to adapt the club to play all those type of shots and that's what I particularly like about it I love the way it sits behind the ball here's some close-ups on exactly how tight it lies to the ground and for me like I said it's a personal thing maybe to the eye but I love how tight it sits behind the ball and it gives me a lot of confidence first shot not a lot of green to work with you'd want to throw this one up fairly soft but from a fairly short dif distance we're about 25 yards from the flag one that would scare the death out of me, to be honest with you, but we'll give it a go. Did I mention the pond just at the back? two points to mention we've got the camera at the back of the green so what you'll see there is just how quickly that ball has come to rest how soft it lands nice soft landing stop within a few inches I would think when we have a closer look but like I said tight lie not a very confident wedge player able to throw that up nice and soft that's one shot executed okay so exactly the same hole now but from the back of the green plenty of green to work with Certainly you don't want to throw one up in the air, it's all downhill to the pin, in a bit of rough. Now I'll be looking for a low sort of chip and run and get it all the way to the hole fairly low to the ground. What I like about the versatility of this wedge is I can close this face down a little bit. Because of the way the club sits on the ground, I feel that it doesn't alter anything from the top line in terms of confidence. I'm not really closing that club head down at all and still be able to achieve this kind of chip and run shot now. Or at least I think I can. Try that one again, do it a little bit more. I mean, the ball flight worked. Again, soft landing. Try that again. Is that enough this time? 
That looks a better effort. Yeah, got that one past the pin. Realistic chance of making a par from there. But like I said, that's versatility shot number two. So I know you're all thinking he's had it easy so far. Perfect lies. This one is certainly nestled down. Flag, plenty of green to work with. Um, certainly don't want to thin this one. Water at the back of this pin. But let's just see how this golf club with 64 degrees of loft. I'll be using the loft on this one. See if it cuts underneath this ball and whether I can still pop it up and land it reasonably soft. So this is where for me, again the versatility of the club. I'm trying to lay this club face wide open even at 64 degrees and away again the way this hosel is shaped and the way it's cut into the hosel the, the bottom of the club face it just always seems to sit perfect no matter what shot you're trying to play it just seems to sit nice behind the ball Well, the ball's rolled through, it just off to the fringe. It was a little bit more than it needed, but it certainly, I think the shot explained at least um, what I was trying to achieve, which is how easy it is yet again to get that ball out of a ball that's sitting down in the rough. You can still open this club face up and pop the ball up. And again, that was a very, very soft landing. And again, versatility shot number three with one wedge. So the final test for this 64 degree high toe wedge has got to be from a bunker. I don't know about you, but I like playing a club with plenty of loft in a bunker. Again, just gives me that extra bit of confidence. I think I can get the ball popped up. Certainly needs to hear fairly steep bank. Nice bit of sand in it. Let's see what the high toe wedge does out of a bunker. I'm more than happy with that, wasn't my best bunker shot, wasn't the greatest to contact, but maybe again, that just goes to show how much help I was getting there off the club face in terms of loft and getting that ball popped up high, certainly high enough anyway to get out of here. But again, for me, that's versatility shot again that's been added to this 64 degree wedge. It's great for bunkers as well. So for me, when I, when I test any product as an average golfer, the first thing I'm looking to do is see whether or not where they can give me some help because let's be honest we all need as much help as we can get and one of the big things I rave about is G400 Max Driver I just love the size of the sweet spot which I believe is there uh, and how much help and assistance it gives me and I look at this wedge in a similar sort of mindset really just how much help it gives how much versatility the word I kept mentioning throughout the video number of different shot types that I can play with it but I don't say these shots are easy I played them, executed them particularly well. I can stab these things through the back of the green uh, as good as anybody else. You've got to execute the shot, don't get me wrong. But it's all about confidence. It's all about, and again, it might just be on my eye the way this sits. But like I said, all those different lies that I referred to, uh, we've looked at throughout the video. Every time that club sat behind the ball, it seemed to be suggesting to me it was the right type of loft on the club to help me out of any given situation. And even when I closed the club face down for a chip and run, it still sat really nice behind the ball. So for me, it's a massive thumbs up for this wedge. I really mean that. And I'm, if I'm honest with you, I wasn't expecting to even get on with it at 64 degrees. I've never used a 64 degree wedge in my life. So the thing I've got to do now is send an email to Taylor Made and ask him, can I keep it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, comments down below have you tried it if you haven't tried it please go out and do so because i'd love to know your opinion even if you walk into the shop and sit it behind a few golf balls and tell me what you think when uh, when it's at a dress because that's the key for me just how it sits behind the ball and i keep going on about all these same things i'll end it there i'm done i'm finished at carden park great days filming plenty of videos to come keep on watching keep on subscribing hit that subscribe button hit the like button and do us a favor and get this uh, video promoted and shared because uh, and he's got a shift on.